Now, um, Jay Felly, yes. always love when you're here. Felly, Felly. Um, if Del Tufo was here, though, I would be addressing him directly right now. All right. Okay, because you're not from New Jersey. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Staten Island, New York, mm-hmm. which is practically New Jersey. I mean, we share three bridges, Staten Island and New Jersey. <laughs> kind of nuts. Outer Bridge, Gothels, and Bayonne. Okay, so we're and, – and one time when I was working for the Staten Island oh, Advance for three years, there was even a, uh, a vote to secede from the city of New York once because we didn't want to take that garbage anymore. Trust me, <laughs> that's literal. There was the Fresh Kills landfill. We took the garbage of every borough in New York City on Staten Island. And everyone was saying, what are we going to do? Our own city or we'll just become part of New Jersey? I swear to you. So when I tell you, I grew up knowing a ton of people like the DeVito family that the entire (laughs) country is being introduced to thanks to their remarkable and remarkably fun play of their son, Tommy, as well as their, you know, love of their son on display and love of family and food and like and their 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 uh, culture heritage. I've known honestly. I feel like I feel like I know these folks. <laughs> okay, Tom DeVito, who is uh, apparently uh, a professional in the plumbing and heating world. Mom Alexandra, who is Instagramming out photos of Tommy, who lives with them. Now that first came up when Tommy started starting for the Giants. Mm. Because Terod Taylor got knocked out, and we all know Daniel Jones is out for the season. And um, we know that he lives with his parents, like George Costanza. He's, it's, he's not saying, I'm, I, I have no job and I live with my parents. He's got a job, <laughs> but he lives with his parents. His job doesn't pay very much, and his parents live within 12, mi- 12, 12 minutes, apparently, of the facility. Makes sense. And he said, Tommy, he's been, it's been famously known, saying, hey, you know, I, I I I get everything I need. <laughs> I get a nice room. I get food. Yeah. And we learn that his, you know, cutlets are on the menu, right? Chicken cutlets, chicken. He's Tommy Cutlets now. Tommy cutlets. His nickname hey, is. Hey, and, how you doing? Yeah. And you like know, I'm a clown, I amuse you. And so, and by the way, that character that you just heard from Goodfellas is named. Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito, and yesterday was the anniversary of the Lufthansa heist. <laughs> Can't write this. Uh, like I'm a clown, I am usually. A caper that we all know was cultivated for a very long time by Maury the Wigman. May he rest in peace. Of course. <laughs> yes. Can't make it up. <laughs> and then uh, on the nationally televised game, on ABC, on network TV, Tommy's there out on the field with his agent, who I've, I, I can't believe I've never crossed paths with this guy. <laughs> Sean Stilato, who's a longtime agent in this league. You remember Alfred Morris, the Al- running back? Yeah, yeah. former cowboy, former a, co- a client of his. Okay. Hey. As a matter of fact, he's been in this business so long, he's getting inducted this week into the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame in Chicago, Illinois. Wow. What wow. a great way to go in wow. is Tommy DeVito's ruling. And, and look at the way he's showing up. I saw this. You know the first thing I thought of? It was Michael Corleone's bodyguard in Godfather Part 2 who tried to take out Hyman Roth. You remember that? <laughs> Why did you tell me? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> you tell me I'm wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> he doesn't have the makings of a varsity athlete. Honestly, and then you see the parents in the crowd, and they're you know they're making the the hand gestures, I and know. Tommy's doing this, and the players are all doing this to him. And I'm telling you, I've grown up with people that I, I know, like the Devitos. This kid, Tommy, played high school for Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey, and was dynamite there. And went to Syracuse. Sure right? did. And so, watching their son do this for the New York Giants has got to be mind blowing to them. Mind blowing. I'm getting goosebumps yeah. thinking of it. 
they have to be because the number of times they probably drove by the old giant stadium and you know the old brendan Byrne arena i made jimmy hoffa jokes i, I, I don't know like all of us when we grew up there like yeah. I, I was <laughs> they probably did i was the them. mc the giants and the jets and the nfl were kind enough to ask me to mc the the uh the moment where they first turned dirt to build metlife stadium oh. and and every luminary was there from governor the governor the commissioner, the owners of the Jets and the Giants, and I basically said, when we break ground, everybody keep keep an eye out for Jimmy Hoffa. Nobody laughed. When I say nobody <laughs> laughed, nobody laughed. Really? Yes. That's a good joke. Nobody laughed. I might have gotten a smirk out of Steve Tisch because he's just a wonderful person, you know, and a comedy guy who had a cameo in the on Seinfeld years ago in the diner. At any rate, so – they have to be out of their skulls watching this. And then last night, with the Green Bay Packers in town, on a Monday night, since 1950, how about that for a start in a stat? How many quarterbacks do you think in the NFL have a completion percentage in a single game of 80%. So you've completed 80% of your passes and ran for over 70 yards. And at the same time, no sacks taken and no turnovers committed. How many quarterbacks do you think have done that since 1950? I'll give you a hint. It's one. His name is Tommy DeVito. <laughs> How is that possible? That happened I mean, last <laughs> night. What? Should I repeat it? Please do. <laughs> in a game in the National Football League since 1950. Okay. 80% completion mm -hmm. of your attempted passes. So you've completed 80% of your passes. I get that. You've run for over 70 yards as well. Okay. You didn't take a sack. No sacks. And you didn't commit a turnover. No turnover. Just one? Just one. Tommy Cutlets? Tommy Cutlets. Unreal. How you doing? Hey. Hey. And it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy that the Giants pay Daniel Jones $40 million a year, and this kid is operating the offense in a much more efficient way. Now, this may, be, it may not be fair because of the different competition and the different level of expectations. And, the, and you know, you don't have to open the season against the Dallas Cowboys. But it's three wins in a row. And by beating the Packers... The Giants are five and eight, and everybody else in front of them is six and seven. What if Tommy DeVito makes the playoffs? Yeah. I, I'm just throwing it out here right now. And I look, and there have been stories in New York City like this before: Kevin Moss of the Yankees and Jeremy Lin of the Knicks. But the kid is the kid's the kid looks sustainable to me. And it opens the run game too. Saquon started busting yeah. out. Here's Tommy DeVito after the game when asked about, again, he, he didn't just boat race him. You know, they, they, they were back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then after Saquon with some, you can't make it up, doesn't give himself up, fumble, as he's running what it looks like for a touchdown, and the Packers take that and take the lead, and Tommy DeVito is now leaned on to – get them in field goal range, and he does it, and they win the game. This was DeVito after the game about that scenario. Just go win the football game. Go execute a drive that we practice every day before practice, which is a two-minute drive. We do it every day, different situations. Um, I assume over all the practices we've had that exact situation or something very similar to it. So just go out, execute the offense, and go win the game. How much do you like being in that situation? I mean, you enjoy it when it's an outcome like this, right? Um, I mean, I enjoy being on the field any play, no matter what play it is. So I'm just trying to enjoy it. How, how do you want to – I, I need a 30 for 30 on, on what he was wearing. You know what I mean? Like, no idea. Where did that come from? Nope, no clue. Is it in his closet from high school? You know, like, like did he just yeah. grab it, go into the game? I love it. <laughs> I love all about it. I want to see more of him. I want to learn more about him. I can't get enough of him and his family serving up. All sorts of food mm -hmm. for 300 in the parking lot before the game. Exactly the type of folks that I grew up with. And coming up next 
It's Cutlets versus Gumbo. They're going to New Orleans, and New Orleans is one of the six and seven teams they're tracking down. And all we said for the last 24 hours, 36 hours, when the Eagles lost to the Cowboys, they've now lost two in a row, and they've got a tough game in Seattle. After that, they play the Giants twice. So the Eagles will be fine. Oh, really? DeVito versus Sirianni. Big Dom against the <laughs> DeVitos. Come on! You can't make it up. It's unbelievable. And Giants fans, good for you, man. Good for you. They're, they're having fun. They're excited about their team when they thought they were dead and buried. And how about MetLife? There's life in MetLife. First time all year. Jets and Giants play on the same weekend. Zach wins. DeVito wins. What the hell is happening? Who the thunk it? What's going on? Cutlets for everyone. What the hell going on? I love it. I can't get enough of it. I feel like I'm back home again. Complaining about the stink and the traffic. (laughs) Oh, my God. Don't make you choke. All right. Well done. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.